Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in automation, the light campaign V2 in the first patch of the open beta. And uh, we're just starting the production of our Vista Automotive 46 with the base trim and the base engine and nothing more. We already sowled, uh, we sowled a massive amount of Sowler's cars, 4,168 of them, and made a profit of 3 million bucks. Sounds good to me. And, and now let's take a look if we can optimize this a little further. So yeah, demand has come down a little bit. I think we can produce more. Um, but we don't want to overdo that. And this is because we have tuned. Whoa! Why can we still adjust difficulty here? That's not supposed to be there. Ah, oh, maybe because it was the first car. Uh, it disappears as soon as you um, get into the second one. I hope. I hope. Otherwise, this is a bug. Anyway, I'm not going to change anything there. But what I wanted to show you is that uh, this number the total production cost of a car of course goes up if you push up to the shifts and the calculation the base price calculation remains intact that means if you have set up your initial factories when you signed off the project to something like two shifts without any additional penalty here then you might cut into your margin when you then afterwards set it higher that is just a fair warning to you guys. And I think I'm going to use just this final slider instead, because that automatically matches things. So we can do two things. I want to bring this up to uh, to 20. Oh, that hurts. Uh, how much can we produce here then? Well, basically the same amount as before. Our, yeah, our demographics will expand in the next few months. So what I'm going to do is just build up a little bit of cars here. Doesn't hurt us. And 15% undersold. Yeah, sounds good to me. So let's just close this and see how it goes. Our sales are everywhere. This is looking good. Doing lots of family sales, lots of commuter sales. We are conquering the city demographics. We are even in the pony demographics because that's the only thing that is affordable to uh, the Achanans, I guess. Even though we have a massive 800cc engine. Now let's run a few months here. We are in 1949. And then see what new car we can make. Now the stock is already decreasing rapidly as our... Or maybe the economy is improving. Uh, uh, yeah, luxury is going up. But normal... Normal category is also going up, but also our, our awareness is going up. Oh, yeah, we do need a larger factory, it seems, because this is going pretty well. Hmm, difficult. Good thing that we bought this large uh, plot, though. Oh, let's get back in here and increase this a bit further, 2.6, and mark this. Whoa, no, just one more percent, maybe. Or two, uh, two, two, maybe, yeah, should be good. Uh, we want to start designing a new car in... Let's take a look at the research and development. What is coming up next? Um, 52. Hmm, maybe that might be an idea. Like, save up until 1952. Or we can get this a little earlier by investing into research now. Mm, but that might be... Uh, do we really need that though? No, we don't need the two shoe drum brakes if we are designing another one of these rear engine cars. That's a good way of getting around it. So no, I'm not going to do that. Not going to invest in that now. And it's very early on to invest into research anyway for a company like this. We have a lot of uh, good familiarity for various things. So no, we're just going to run this uh, another few months maybe 1951 or something and from there we are then going to design the next car in our lineup now we are building up quite a bit of stock though what's going on 
What is the economy doing? Oh, it's still going well. What are our sales doing, though? Ah, these budget segments don't really like us anymore. Yeah, let's drop the price by 1%. This 10% overproduction is oh, kind of necessary, almost, if we want to uh, build up a little bit of stock. But running a deficit just to build up stock is not ideal. So this is looking much better. Doing making profit and building up stock. That is what I want to see. And almost at 1951. And we are going to pause there and upgrade... Uh, build a new car and upgrade our factories. So, okay, pause. Uh, we have only made 74 score. <laughs> that's, that's really bad. Um, but it is the market which dictates how much score you make. I mean, we can't really sell to anything that has any kind of prestige going for it. Let's take a look at this, though. That is very important. Uh, oh, yeah, it has been going up quite a bit. Uh, the main cost factor here is uh, the production of the cars. And we are selling them. This was the overproduction. We still have quite a few more in stock. And that's looking good. We have two months of stock. And we are going to produce another two and a half years if uh, the engineering again takes three years. And in that time, I want to build up a stock of, what would that be? With factory upgrade, that needs to be six months. So, yeah, we have to keep that in mind. And, um, okay, let's start a new car. And why on the 1st of January, you ask? Well, that is because I don't have partial tech pool. If I had partial tech pool, I would probably wait until the important components had ticked over in tech here, so that I get another quality point. But in this case, we have only uh, integer values of tech pool right now, because they, they are only based on what we set at the start of the campaign. And um, yeah, so let's build another car. There's nothing new in the market which is really going to cut it, though. So I'm going to build another one of these. And, well, do we really... Ah, no, we don't want to extend that. <laughs> we want to extend it in the front. And um, overall, I really like my old build, so I'm just going to update it. Now we have the monocoque chassis, though. That is a good upgrade to have. That might actually improve the whole thing a lot. Yeah, less heavy. Um, it does give us even better brakes uh, compared to the body weight. And uh, the brakes certainly haven't improved since last time. Um, and it gives us access to different suspension types, which are less engineering heavy. So what we can do there is, well, we have a less comfortable car, but it will be cheaper overall. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to the Achanans too. So let's uh, do this one again. And we put in our characteristic inline free. There we go. Probably not exactly the same, but who cares? Uh, no, not for sure. Uh, overhead cam, yes. Familiarity 10%. Oh, we're getting a bit of, of uh, engineering time off. Still going with the two valve set of up uh, of course uh, we are going to wait a little bit more for the other types could even go with a bit of quality on the head uh, that increases reliability a little bit and we do have the familiarity so it doesn't hurt too much Still with the one barrel eco carb, that is good enough for us. Lean it out to the max and then go with 60 ignition timing maybe. And 50, 200 and plus 8 once again. Short cast, a little bit familiar there. And now the 1 inch. Ah, do we want to go with the, No, we wanted to go with the 45 here, the 0.75 inch. And we have reverse flow available. That it will increase um, both cost, weight, and comfort. The latter one being the important one. So 31 horsepower. Hmm. And we do have a little bit more octane to go on. Like this. 
What is really limiting right now is the carb. I'm wondering if I should switch to inline force at uh, some point in the near future once we are getting rid of this tiny engine bay car. Ah, that's unfortunate. All right. At uh, reliability 46.1. Or do we want to have this extra little bit of power? Hmm. I think we are still good. These uh, years are so early that they don't really care about performance yet. So this is the way I'm going to go. 46.1. Uh, or oh, how does this increase if I give it another point of tech? Not much is the answer. 46.3. Uh, it's not really worth it. Traves off only 200 grams of the engine. We could go with an automatic, but no, that's far too early. Let's do the um, overdrive setup once again. We don't need any differential, of course. Going for the hard, long life. Uh, reducing this, and then we can increase this and drop this by clicking on it like a madman because this is bug this is one of the things with the tire sizes where you are kind of seeing weird behavior if you're going low that is a consequence of the completely fucked UI um, and that cannot be fixed it's either this bug or another one which is much worse <laughs> so we have, we have chosen this one to to go along with so this will be one of the things which will be much better in Unreal Engine 4 where we have a complete rewrite of the whole thing. Let's see if we can get up in tire size a little bit though. Yeah, yeah we can. Uh, even if plus one? No, we need plus two. Let's see the price difference. Material cost 182. And whoa, no that's not worth it I guess. Let's keep the 105s. That's a big difference. Again, with the four seats, maybe we want to go with five? I don't know. Maybe five, yes. Uh, that gives higher practicality rating, which is very much appreciated in the family categories, as well as the city category. So, yeah, maybe five it is. It's a little bit crammed in there, but then again, we don't have any comfort level to speak of anyway. Ah, uh, this is something we could spend money on. It's just like 60 extra bucks. 65. But in all the categories we want to sell it, it the advanced safety actually means a lot. But we should check out if the Achanans do care about safety at this early on. I don't think they do. They're like middle fingering uh, my face right now. And yeah, so maybe it doesn't help. We do need the um, predictors here in order to see that. Okay. Alright, so we want to save this one. Let's drop the rear sway bar once again. Oh, it doesn't tick over yet. Now it tick, ticks over. And this might be a bit too far. Suspension? Oh, it can bring it down a little bit. Okay. Not too bad, but not good either. Can we do something with the tires? 85 is the minimum already. And we can't go up there unless we are like investing lots. And if we do that, it goes the wrong direction. Right, so we want to extend it here. Yeah, that would help. But I think it looks completely fucked. Yes, it does. <laughs> would you would you be comfortable to to place your fat ass in that car. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I can tell you that. So let's uh, just go with something that is a little bit reasonable like this. Yeah, that's good. And uh, I'm wondering if we maybe should go here because this makes handling so much easier. There you go. Don't even have to try that hard now. Uh... Maybe that was a bit too much. Ah, there we go. Yeah, much better. Okay. This is the wrong direction still, so... One. There we have it. And that's the optimal. 
Okay, now it's just a damper stiffness. Th those look very, very soft. Uh, let's see what happens if we just amp them up a little bit. Like twice the stiffness. <laughs> yeah, that was beneficial. So let's amp up to twice the stiffness here too. Yep, that was good. I think we take that. And on the interior, nothing much we can do there really. We have our uh, base interior. Let's see what the different people actually think. Uh, ooh, <laughs> that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's take family and uh, city. Those two categories are the bigger ones, uh, apart from commuter, obviously. So what do you guys like? Let's see if we are going... Yeah, no, the quality is appreciated, as that comes with very little extra cost. If you go here, it's not appreciated, because we can't produce that cheaply. Yeah, at a uh, rough limit here. If you are... you can see it like that. If you are at 50% affordability for a category, then any little change will mean a lot, because it's a, a cumulative Gaussian curve. And you get the biggest change right in the middle, that is at 50% when you're integrating over that curve. So the number nerds among you will be like, yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you mean, Kirov. I've done that plenty of times. And uh, the other ones will all be like, what the fuck is he talking about? That's exactly as it should be. Let's see if they like a radio. Oh, those obviously don't like a radio. But four versus five seat, that is an interesting question. Ah, you see, nope, they like five seats. They definitely do like their practicality. Uh, 50 practicality here that is uh, that is pretty low but then again we have a rear engine so where the <laughs> where your normal baggage uh, storage is there there's just an engine so uh, they have to store everything in the front didn't look much smaller though so hmm. Don't really care. But, oh yeah, this is something we wanted to check out. How do these react to the gain in safety versus the increase in price. Oh, okay, now pretty massive. City actually likes the sm uh, the standard better, but family really cares about safety. So they do like that one better. So we can invest one more there. Oh, that makes it super expensive though. Oh, that's weird. Oh, maybe that just changes balance of the car quite a bit. I think I'll leave it here. 6-6. Six, six. No, they they do like just advanced safety and no quality. So they want to imagine they are safe. I think this car works out just fine. Apart from the lack of headlights and, and shit. Uh, let's see about the cooling though, if we actually need that much. Because we could... What? 5.78, uh, 79 liters. What would that be like this? Oh, it doesn't help that much. Okay, increases the top speed and makes it worse overall. Because we do need the reliability. Oh, that was a big change. Yes. Over well, 1.5 reliability just from the extra cooling. Yeah, there we go. Let's get it to 70. There we go. Yes, perfect. All right, I'm very happy with this car. And mm, what more to do? Do we want to have any variant of that? Or just go with mass production of this one? I think we keep to the mass production of this one and just concentrate on uh, making the next car then a variant heavy version. But what we could do is to, um, oh, wait, I have to name those. We could make a version which has the slightest amount of, uh, <laughs> the slightest hint of comfort in the, in the interior, just to cater a little bit to the more luxurious markets and see if we can't get into that. And maybe that is a kind of ridiculous thing to do, but I think it might be worth it just to, like, put a little bit more of a prestigious stamp on our cars. Alright, so clone it, and then we go for... Uh, do we go for the two-door variant? No, that compromises safety too much. 
uh, not safety, um, practicality too much, I wanted to say. Uh, we can go with the same thing here. Uh, we call this the premium. And we put all the premium stuff in there, like this. Wow, look at the premiumness of this. It's amazing. And maybe, yeah, that was a good choice. Four seats there. Uh, still have good tuning. Yeah, that's still optimal. Very good. No bottoming out, nothing. And let's take a look at the markets. Did that actually help? Yeah, maybe. Maybe it did. Not quite sure. Commuter Premium, they probably like us better now. But they do have a massive amount of money left. Uh, family Premium. Let's check out these two categories and see what they like the best. So if you go for Premium, they increase. Okay, Premium. They increase. Uh, did they? Yes, they do. So if we go Premium, Premium, and then use our... Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, commuter premium. Let's sell into that segment, which doesn't really exist in Arana. Sounds like a solid plan. Maybe we can use this. No, no, they don't like it. Still, they don't like it. What about the seats? Nope, they don't like it in the premium. In the premium category, they want only four. Okay, fair enough. Uh, that is... Oh, what have we done? Ah. More. Give me more drivability. No, there isn't more. Maybe stiffen up a little bit more here. No, that was bad. Bad Rob. So, our little premium car is now on the road. But what we haven't done yet will improve the car a lot is set up the brakes and the rear brakes are looking perfect already but the front brakes don't uh, the sweet spot seems to be something around 17 for the pad type and I should not forget to um, put the base version in here too and optimize that and same thing goes here, but it's lighter overall, so these lines are lower. And that means... Uh, let me see what that means. We have to pull that down even further. Yeah, somewhere here. Okay. All done, all done. And now... Check out the markets. Oh, it's so green and beautiful. What does it look like at plus 20? Still very green and beautiful. And our premium version. What does that look like at plus 20? Oh, very green and beautiful. Even makes a good premium budget car. Huh. Ooh, the engineering time though. 3.3 years. Hmm. Let's go with our two experts here. Ah, much better. Two years, 11 months. And now it's three years exactly. And here it's just two years. Very good. Then we make it reliable. Uh, that was a bit too much. Three years. Okay. 20 million cost here. 31.6 million there. It's good that we are making a bit big profit. Now for the factories. Let's choose our existing production, just to assign it there. And the shift count there, currently making a profit of 3.5 million. It's a medium one. And now let's see if we can't upgrade this a little bit. So, hmm. Overall build costs 20 million. Of course, we don't have to pay for the plot or anything. Uh, that isn't much. And I think if we are looking here, this one can produce uh, 200, yes, 264 engines a day, but only 129 cars. We can easily up that to a, let's go with a medium free factory. That's a massive expansion. 
costs us a total of 85.7 million. And I think we are going to have the money. What are the production costs here? 460, that's nothing. Uh, I think you would be looking at something like 1,200 in, um, in Gazmir for the same car. Okay, cool. Uh, we don't want to have many premium cars and we do want to have a lot of base cars. And now we match here. Ah, 2.0. Very nice. They are perfectly aligned right now. Maybe not perfectly, but well aligned. And this looks very different than before. It's much greener. So let's take a look at the base. Oh, look at that. It's super green. It is green. Really green. Even in the budget segments in Achana. And that is exactly what we were aiming for just to make a company which actually works for budget buyers. It's only like 5% that can afford one, but that still makes it the best car in the market. And wow, look at the demand. Can just about sell enough premiums there too. Uh, and 7.4k a month. This is very scalable though, because we have our um, factories aligned so that we can reduce and improve shifts quite a bit. The only thing we can't do is more than 3.0 shifts. Talk about a newsflash. Leave it at that. For now, there will be competitors out and stuff. So, yep. 148 million. Hmm. Is that something we can put through? I think it might be a little tight. But, on the other hand, I think we have to risk that. We don't have any other costs. And we have had a little bit of overproduction going on already. So, there is more, we have more money right now sitting in the parking lot. Which just isn't on our account yet. But, let's make sure here one thing. Now, this will be, tooling start will be in September of 53. And then production starts... Uh, a little later, six, is that six months later, a month later, uh, more or less five months. Um, yeah, that's good to take into account. So we need a stock buildup of five months in total, to just to be sure. Sign off. Yes. We have 11,000 cars. That's two months worth of sales. All right. I think the only thing we need to do now is uh, speed through it and see what comes out of it. Uh... So we wait for September 53, it was. Ah, pause here. Uh, we are actually losing stock now. See, the sales are going very well. Very, very well in the family segment. Like, everything is a little green here in the middle. Uh, the markets are expanding. That's probably why we are losing stock. And the economy is on an upswing for the normals, for the normies. Overall, it's still pretty low. I can guess me, it's still below parity for 1940. That means I want to go into the production setup here and see what we can do in order to increase. Ah, we are already at 2.6 shifts, so maybe I have to just increase the price once again. 23% markup. Costs us a little bit of market share, but at least we get back our stock build-up, which we need. So now stock is building up. Finances, yes, that is the drop I expect. And just making a little bit of loss there, but we're still increasing from just gaining reputation and, uh, and just market share. So this is all looking good. I don't know about... How much taxes are we going to pay this year, though? Now we're making a profit again. And only 1.6 million. Perfect. We want to balance it such that we are always investing the correct amount to never really pay taxes. That is optimal gameplay in the light campaign V2. And that needs to be done by year because the finances are so simple still that we don't track uh, previous losses over the year end. That will be a thing so that you 
can have lost like five years ago, which was so massive that you can still have tax write-offs in the um, here now. So we pause here and see what the stock is up to. Three months. Okay. Not not perfect, but not bad either. Uh, how are we doing? Let me take a look here. We have to only get through to uh, what was it? September. Oh. Yeah, still a 0.1 build up each month. Maybe a little bit low. If we have a 0.2 build up each month, that would mean that we have enough cars to sell in. Uh, that would give us another month, another whole month of stock. Uh, we go with this and speed forward. Yes, we have a nice build up coming here 4.3. 4.5 and there we have it okay five months worth of stock and a little bit more I guess yep 5.2 and now it should be cancelled no oh shit another month of production ah there now it's cancelled okay this month didn't count though so it was good that we had that and now um now this figure should rise massively because there is no production cost going on right now. But only cars being sold. Yes. <laughs> Lots of profit. Let's take a look at the finances. So the costs dropped immensely because we are no longer producing. But now we are building the factory instead. And next tick. Still selling massive amounts of cars. This is all going really well. And here tick how much do we have to pay zero perfect 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 this is going really well uh, pause and let's get to our new car selling and see how how that one performs still have two months worth of stock which should be good oh no now it's in production so we have a little bit of over uh, over stock here not too much though let's see oh Let's see. Stop. We sold everything. Le Fouque. Okay. Uh, we sold everything. Eight million profit. And uh, we could have much more. Ah. Huh. Ah, huh, this is going really well. Isn't this an easy game? Super easy. Why did I make such an easy game? I don't know. Anyway, guys. Uh, I think this wraps up this episode. Hope you enjoyed. And see you guys next time!